Welcome to f i n d e p e n d e n c e Journey and Happy New Year 2022. Today I'll talk about how the stock market performed in 2021 and review my growth stock portfolio for December and the year 2021. The S&P 500 rose 26.89% in 2021, marking the benchmark's third straight positive year. The Dow and Nasdaq also gained 18.73%. and 21.39% for the year, respectively. Considering all the troubles caused by COVID-19, stocks performed pretty well because the markets were supported by highly accommodative fiscal and monetary policies. There are three investing lessons we could learn in 2021. I'll summarize each of them for you. Number one, don't allow your politics to influence your investing decisions. The economy cares very little about who's in the White House, and it seems that a pandemic cares even less. Republican and Democratic presidents alike want to see strong economic growth and market gains. Given that, investing based on your politics is crazy. Those that sold when Trump was elected got hurt, as did those who sold in anticipation of a Biden-led attack on capitalism. Understand that we all have biases, accept them, and put them aside when investing. Number two, when it comes to the market, people power is now a thing. Aggressively shorting stocks is something that funds will think twice about after 2020. It started early in the year with GameStop. ticker symbol GME, a group of individual investors chatting on Reddit and reportedly originally motivated by a nerdish love of the video gaming store, ganged up on Wall Street. They realized that by using the leverage available to investors in the new democratized world of investing, they had enough power to force the then thinly traded stock up and squeeze out the big boys who were short. That kind of squeeze creates yet more buying pressure as the shorts rush to get out. And when the buyers that caused the move refuse to sell their now massive holdings, you get what we saw in January. A 2,740% jump in the GME stock. AMC stock followed suit in the spring, and there have been many more. Number three. Stocks trend upwards. This is the most important lesson of 2021. In a year when COVID mutated and struck back, when inflation took hold, and when the Fed began to reverse the loose monetary policy that had provided so much support for the stock market, the S&P 500 gained 27%. As we move into 2022, remember that. It's quite possible that, as the Fed actually does start to raise rates, particularly if that's too late to stop inflation really taking hold, we will see a scary drop in stocks at some point next year. Or it could come should COVID keep mutating and surging, or for any other myriad of different reasons. However, when it comes, know this. Stocks will, at some point, be higher than they were before the fall began. Now let's take a look at my portfolio. The month-end balance of December is $4,927. Compared with November, it was decreased by $412, that is 7.73% decrease. My stock holdings are exactly the same because I didn't buy or sell any stocks in December. My top three holdings in my portfolio are Tesla, Lucid, and Palantir. The inception to date gain of my portfolio is 4.81%. It turns out my portfolio underperformed the S&P 500 in 2021. A few stocks have been dragging down the entire portfolio. MOL, Nano Dimension, and Palantir are down a lot, while the portions of the cost for them are pretty high. The cost for 
MOL is $670. It's down 59%. The cost for nano dimension is $420. It's down 48%. The cost for Palantir is $550. It's down 24%. In 2021, I tried to lower the average cost of them by adding more shares, but it didn't work very well. With quantitative tightening expected in 2022, I'll need to be more careful not to buy stocks too early. My objective is to grow the value of this portfolio to $1 million by the end of 2030. I'm uploading a portfolio review every month so if you'd like to watch the progress of my journey to $1 million, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. This graph shows the market value of my portfolio over time. My portfolio grew fast in October and November, when growth stocks performed very well. Especially Tesla, Lucid, SoFi, Digital Turbine, and Unity went up a lot in that period. What I also notice is that as my portfolio gets bigger, the effect of monthly contribution is decreasing. In March, if I added $250 of cash, it was 10% of my portfolio. In December, $250 is only 5% of the portfolio. It might be a good idea for me to sell some stocks to raise cash to be prepared for the possible downturn in the stock market. Lastly, let me calculate how much my portfolio grew in 2021. At the beginning of 2021, the initial balance of my portfolio was $2,164. The balance at the end of 2021 is $4,927. The yearly change rate of my portfolio balance comes to 127%. Keep in mind that most of the growth came from the monthly contributions. As we saw earlier, the performance of my portfolio in 2021 was 4.8%. That was my portfolio review for the year 2021. If you have enjoyed this video, Please help this channel grow by hitting the like button, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate your support. I also recommend checking out my other videos that may interest you. Thank you for watching.